Did you know that you can make money sitting in your pajamas, sipping an espresso coffee, or working on a tropical island? And the best thing is, it's actually easier to get these types of jobs I'm going to mention in this video when you don't have any experience. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. Welcome to the 13 best remote jobs for beginners. And there are going to be amazing options for you on this list, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, whether you're creative or analytical, or if you're an ambitious type person, or you just want a chill job where you can do like two hours of work per day and then just enjoy the rest of your life. Now you might be thinking, oh, you can't work remote because you're in a career path where you have to be there in person and there's just no remote opportunities for you. And I remember I used to think the same exact thing myself because I was a pharmacist. Now, a few years ago, I was working as a pharmacist and the job was really good, but then the whole cough, cough situation happened in the world and I started to get burned out. I felt really stressed out in my job. I thought it was an endless cycle of being stressed out and stuck inside of the pharmacy for 12 to 13 hours per day. And I also saw that the world got shut down and I realized that my dreams of traveling, right? I dreamed of traveling the world since I was young might not always be there someday, right? I might not always have that opportunity. So I started looking for opportunities to work remote and I was able to keep working on a pharmacist and go on my first remote vacation to Puerto Rico with my best friend, John. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't land a remote job, I know this is probably going to hurt, but I have to tell you, it's probably because you aren't skilled. It's probably because you don't have the skills where you can put yourself in a position to leverage your skills and have a opportunity to work a remote job job. It's just the God's honest truth. Because if you had incredibly valuable skills, companies would be fighting over you and they would be offering you opportunities to work remote if you'd like to. And that's the difference between going where the opportunity is, learning valuable skills, and just going where everybody else does and following the crowd. And honestly, like after that vacation, my life changed forever. I had a taste of the remote work lifestyle and there was no going back after that. I could never go back to like a normal job where I had to like work at an office or work at a clinic. And it wasn't even just the travel part, like having to go to a place and then being inside of a box for 12 to 13 hours a day. It was also the fact that it saved something like two to three hours a day of my time, right? So all that time that you get ready in the morning, you make sure you're properly shaved, you make sure you have really nice new clean clothes, you make sure that you pack your lunch for yourself, all that takes a ton of time in the morning. And then of course, there's the traveling to work, you have to actually travel, that was an extra like 30 to 45 minutes. And then of course, you have to show up 15 minutes early. And if you don't leave 15 minutes late, your boss might think that you're lazy. Barbara, you're late, man. So that's an extra 30 minutes per day. And then on top of that, let's say you get like an hour long lunch at work. Is it really a real lunch when you have to stay at work? You're not really able to do what you want to do. No, not really. But if you get that same lunch at home, you can do whatever you want. You can go do errands. You could do a home workout. There's so many things that you could do with that time. So that's basically like having an extra hour. So when you add everything together, that's an extra two to three hours per day. And I know a lot of people out there are commuting even more than 15 or 30 minutes to work. So if you have a long commute, it can be even more than that. But let's just say you have an extra three hours per day. Imagine saving three hours per day, which is like 15 hours a week and over 780 hours per year. Imagine what skills you could learn with an extra 780 hours a year. Imagine how much healthier you could get if you put that time into going to the gym and working out. Imagine how much clearer your mind would be if you meditated with that time. Imagine how many times that you could gently tap the like button on great YouTube videos like this one, or how much extra sleep you could get so that you felt better during the day. Yeah, this stuff actually makes like a huge difference. And that's why so many people want to work in remote jobs. And that's why it can be life changing. Okay, so number 13 is going to be a link building specialist. And this is probably something you've never heard of before. All right, so I was at a business conference and I met this lady who worked for one of the biggest SEO people in the world. Like they're one of the biggest names in SEO, which is basically like creating blogs. And I was talking to her about what she did and she basically told me that she is a link building specialist or a link outreach specialist. And I was thinking like, okay, what's so special about this position that your boss would actually pay for you to come to this big business conference where each ticket costs like $1,000, right? Because you only bring your top level people to stuff like this. And the truth is her position is that important. And you're probably wondering what the heck is link outreach specialist? Like what do they actually do? Well, they work for a blog and they try to get other blogs to send links back to their blog. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that's not a big deal. Like why would that be so special? Well, that's how Google figures out where to rank your blog 
on their search engine. So if you have a really good article, but you don't have other articles and other blogs that are linking back to that article, chances are it's not going to get on the first page. And so that is how important this position is. And the thing is, is it's not that easy to get other blogs to send links back to your blog because they also know how valuable it is. And the difference between being on like the first page of Google and being on the second page might be something like making $10,000 a month with a single blog post and making like $100 a month. Like there might be a 100x difference. Now, if you type in link building specialist on LinkedIn, there's 37,000 results. And if you type it in on Glassdoor, you're going to see they make about $79,000 per year. Now, as you can imagine, there's not that many people out there that have this skill set because it's so niche and it's so new. But if you are somebody who is able to develop that skill set where you get really good at finding the contact people for these big blogs and then figuring out how to get them to send links back to your blog, it can be absolute money. I mean, this person was making several hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, not everybody is gonna make several hundred thousand dollars a year, of course, but I think you get the point here. This is an incredibly lucrative skill set. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one an eight out of 10 money score. Number 12, quality assurance analyst. Now, this is an especially good position if you work in the technology field. And what you're basically gonna be doing is you're gonna be checking their products and services to make sure that they meet certain quality standards. Now, it is a good good job in many cases to have some sort of coding knowledge, right? Because you're going to be working with technology companies, but you don't need to be a coding expert, but you do need to know just enough code so that you can check and see if it's a quality product. So think of a quality assurance analyst, almost like an editor for a writer, right? So you have a writer who comes up with these really good ideas and they write something really amazing. And then you have an editor that comes in and makes sure there's no misspellings, make sure that everything is good. Now, this is another one where you probably have never heard about it before, but if you check on Reddit, there's a ton of people who say that it's a great career to get into. And if you look on Glassdoor, they're going to say you make about $67,000 a year. And just keep in mind, this is the entry level position. There are many other positions you can move into in quality assurance where you make a lot more money than that. So overall, I'm going to give this one an eight out of 10 money score. 11 is going to be online tutoring. So you probably can imagine what this one is all about. You're going to be coaching students over the internet on various different subjects. Now, this is one where you can get a full-time job as an online tutor. You can also do it as a freelancer and you can also do it as a side hustle. So there's different side hustle apps out there, for instance, like VIP Kids, where you can do online tutoring. So the most common type of online tutoring is, of course, tutoring in the English language. That's what they do on VIP Kids, but there are many other options out there for you. So let's say that you're one of those weirdos that's good at math. That's a great opportunity for you to be a tutor. Let's say you just happen to be really good at organic chemistry, something that people complain about all the time. That's another great opportunity for you. Another example is let's say you scored really well on a test that you took in the past. So maybe you scored well on the ACT or the SAT, or you took an entrance exam to your school. So maybe you take like an accounting test. In my case, I scored really well on this test called the PCAT, which is the pharmacy college admissions test. And I've told this story in other videos, so I'm not going to repeat it again, but I ended up making well over $100 per hour tutoring people on how they can also score well on this test. And I didn't do any marketing, any sales, anything like that. I literally just told a few people and they started coming to me. So if you pick the right niche when it comes to online tutoring, this can be fantastic. But with that being said, if you're just trying to get a job really quickly, this is not going to be the best one on the list. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a five out of 10 money score. Number 10 is going to be customer service representative. And I know what you're thinking. This is not a good job. And I agree, this is not a job that you want to do for the rest of your life. But with that being said, if you're somebody who is in a position right now where you need to get a job really quickly, this is a great option. You could very easily right now, just about anybody watching this video, especially if you live in a first world English speaking country, get a job as a customer service representative in two weeks. And on LinkedIn alone, there is 1.4 million job opportunities when you type in customer service. Now, this job does not have a lot of upside. You're gonna have to deal with Karens all day. Um, it does teach you some pretty good communication skills, but let's be honest, you know, once you learn some of the basic communication skills, you're not gonna be learning all that much beyond that. Whereas 
there are a lot of jobs on this list where you're gonna be learning valuable skills that you can use in many different areas of your life. So for that reason, this is a good option if you need to get a job right now, but overall, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10 money score. Number nine is digital marketing. And there's actually a ton of different entry-level jobs that you can get within the realm of digital marketing. So for instance, you could work in content marketing. That would be something like helping out a channel like this. You could work in SEO, which is basically where you figure out how to rank blogs on Google search engine. You could also work in pay-per-click, which is basically where you do ads on Google. You could also work as a copywriter, which is basically sales in the written form. So yeah, I've talked about this one extensively on this channel. This is a great option for people who just aren't sure what career path to go into, but they just wanna try something out. Uh, digital marketing gets a 10 out of 10 money score. Now there is one type of digital marketing that I didn't include in the last one because I think it's less valuable than some of the other ones on the list. And that's gonna be the next one I talk about, which is social media management. So this is technically a type of digital marketing, but I also think it's one of the least valuable skills that you can learn. So basically this is where you're going to be the one who's actually uploading content on social media and engaging with the people who comment on it. So it does say on Glassdoor that you can make about $52,000 a year in this job. But overall, most types of social media management are very basic entry level. So I'm going to give this one a five out of 10 money score. Next, we're going to talk about web development. And this is a type of software development, but it's probably one of the least valuable skills within that realm. And this is exactly what it sounds like. So basically, you are going to be writing code for websites. So this is probably the most saturated type of software development. It still can be really good, but the truth is it's one of the easiest types to learn. And so therefore there are a ton of people out there that get into this. But with that being said, it's still pretty good and getting your foot in the door, learning how to code in general is just a good idea. So I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10 money score. Next is content writing. Now this is a very broad terminology. There's so many different types of content that you could write, but this is becoming more and more valuable as the creator economy is rising. So you've probably heard creators like Mr. Beast, for instance, who got offered a billion dollars for his brand. He turned it down and said he wouldn't accept anything less than 10 billion. And honestly, 10 billion is probably too little as well. There are many independent creators out there that get more views than entire news networks of hundreds of people. I believe I read a stat I'll probably like be a little bit off on this, but I think Mr. Beast in one week got more views than the entire World Cup, right? The most popular sport in the world got less views than one single creator named Mr. Beast. And we are honestly still in the infancy of the creator economy. Creators are not getting paid what they deserve yet, right? So there's these news networks that make hundreds of millions of dollars a year, even though they get less views than a single creator who might be making like 100 or 200 or $300,000 a year. But it's starting to even out. Brands are starting to work with these individual creators. And of course, they're starting to hire more and more people. Skills like content writing are becoming incredibly valuable. And there's not that many people out there that are good at a skill like, for instance, writing scripts for YouTube. So if you can get really good at writing scripts for YouTube, you would be able to help out creators and they would probably pay you really good money for that because it's such a rare skill set. But with that being said, it's pretty difficult to get good at this skill. And this is a little bit more of a side hustle slash freelance type gig. You can get full-time jobs for it, but it's not something where it's well established. So for that reason, I'm going to give this one a seven out of 10 money score. Next is data analytics. And this is for the people out there who are extremely analytical and they like to organize things. And there are tons of stories on the internet of people getting into data analytics without having to go to college in a short period of time. Now, according to Glassdoor, data analysts make about $71,000 per year. And remember, that's just the entry level job, right? That's just the first level job you go into. There are many jobs beyond that that make much more. So this is one of my favorite entry level careers to go into. I've talked about this in other videos, but I think the best way to get started with this is by taking the Google Data Analytics Certificate. And with this one, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about one of the best jobs out there, which is software development. I've talked about this one all the time on this channel. A lot of the people who follow this channel are either software developers or people who are trying to get into software development. There are many different ways to get into this. You can get a computer science degree, you can get a software engineering degree. Uh, you can go to a boot camp. You can also try to self-study or get a certificate. But any way that you get into it, the job itself is phenomenal. If you look at the Financial Independence Retire Early subreddit, also known as FIRE, this is basically a bunch of people who are trying to retire by the time they're like 30 or 40. So many of them on there 
are people who are working in software development. And there is a reason for that. It's probably the best paying job that you can get, right? So on Glassdoor, even just the entry level software developer job makes around $95,000 a year. And if you look at websites like levels.fyi, there's people reporting making 200, 300, 400,000, sometimes even a million dollars a year working as software developers. So this one gets a 10 out of 10 money score. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to break into than a lot of the other ones on this list. But if you can do it, it pays incredibly well. Next, we're going to talk about transcription as well as data entry. Now, I will say transcription and data entry, very similar to customer service representative, are incredibly easy to get into. This is another one of those where if you absolutely need a job right now, you could probably land a job in like two weeks. But with that being said, this is absolutely mind numbing work, right? Entering data into a spreadsheet or transcribing audio is not something you want to do for very long. You're also probably not going to be learning that many valuable skills that you can use in other areas of your life. Now, transcriptionists, for instance, they say on Glassdoor, they make about $41,000 per year. So if you absolutely need a job, this is one you could go for. I'd also look into customer service representative. And this is a job that you can do remotely. So that's great. But it's not something that I would look into long term. This one gets a three out of 10 money score. Next, we're going to talk about SEO specialists. Now, SEO SEO stands for search engine optimization. And like I mentioned before, SEO is all about getting Google to rank your blog posts on the top of the search engine. So when you type in valuable keywords, your blog post comes in first. And it's more than just writing good content. There's a lot more to it than that. There's also a lot more to it than getting backlinks to your blog. There is an entire science and art form around doing this. And the people who know how to do it can make a ridiculous amount of money. This is one of the most common business types that I see creating millionaires. So if you can get really good at SEO, not only can you make money working for a blog, but you can also make money creating your own blog down the line. So you're learning valuable skills and getting paid for them right now. And it's going to help you start a business down the line too. But with that being said, it's not very clear and easy to get hired for these types of positions. And it is something that takes a long time to learn. So I'll give this one a seven out of 10 money score. Next one is going to be IT help desk. Now, this is one that I've talked about quite a bit on the channel. And this is basically the number one easiest entry level job to get into within IT or information technology. And basically, you will be taking calls from people and answering their questions when it comes to IT infrastructure. Now, you might be getting questions from people within a company, or you might be getting questions from customers. And according to Glassdoor, you make about $52,000 a year with this job. Now, keep in mind that might sound low, but this is an entry level job, right? There's tons of different IT jobs you can move into down the line that will pay you a lot more. And recently, my business partners and I have actually helped people get IT jobs in 10 days, 14 days, sometimes a month. So it's actually really easy to break into this. And this can lead to a lot of other really good technology related jobs down the line. This one gets a 10 out of 10 money score. And recently, I did a video on the top five best Google certifications. And one of them is IT related. So I'd highly recommend you check that out right here. 